President Muhammad Buhari has asked all members of the Federal Executive Council contesting elective positions in 2023 to resign. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, announced this while briefing State House reporters on the outcome of the Federal Cabinet meeting presided over by Buhari at the Council Chamber of the Presidential Villa in Abuja. He said the ministers have been given up to May 16, 2022 to quit the cabinet and added that only Vice President Yomi Oshibajo, as an elected official, was exempted. Aspiring to run for office, either be it president or governor or National Assembly, must resign from cabinet effectively by the 15th, sorry, by the 16th, which is Monday of this month. With the president's directive, um, about nine members, uh, nine ministers, if you like, uh, have the options of either resigning or dropping uh, their ambitions. Already two ministers, Emeka Nwajuba of the Ministry of Education and Goswil Akpabio, the Minister of Niger Delta, have tendered their resignation in compliance with the President's directive. We now have in the studio a public affairs analyst and a friend of the House, uh, Mr. Jide Ojo, and a legal advisor, uh, a legal practitioner, sorry, Mr. Uh, Barrister Dari Oolabi, to discuss uh, these issues and take a deep dive. Uh, into some of the dramas that we saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, you are welcome to the studio. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I like the same in contrast uh, uh, in the outfit. Uh, uh, I'm sure Mr. Jide would have come in with an Igbo title today. <laughs> 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 spotted, spotted the red cap. Uh, but that's just by the way. Uh, starting with you, just uh, to my immediate right, uh, Barrister Wolabi. Prior to the President Directive yesterday, there were a number of agitations uh, on the basis of morality, some would say, or, or decency, uh, if you like, that this action should have been taken long before now. How would you summarize what, what had happened yesterday, you know, with regards to how, I mean, uh, we, in, in the light of uh, what should be the right thing to do? Well, I, I love the language you use, decency. Political actors in Nigeria lack it. That's just my simple response to that. Mm. There are crimes in this world today. I will, let's take a particular example of uh, the United Kingdom. The parliament in the United Kingdom has absolute power. Mm. But because of the tradition of the, of the political actors that is entrenched in good conscience, the absoluteness of, that, of their power will not be put in use. Mm. So, uh, uh, like I mentioned here earlier, uh, sorry, one of the interviews I granted here, it is unfortunate that uh, <clears throat> these aspirants need to wait until the president directed them to resign mm. in the face of a well-couched provision of electoral hearts. Mm. I'm referring to section 84, 84 sub, sub 12. Not, notwithstanding the decision of the, of the federal High court in Umar here, which, of course, when the, the law is very simple, it's very clear on this. When a decision of a court is appeal, that decision is in abeyance hmm. until the Fair apex enough. court, sorry, until the upper court either hmm. affirms or dismisses or dismiss it. So what one would have expected that people who really want to govern Nigeria in good conscience. Ordinarily, you shouldn't be forced. You know, you are before. the one explaining this, but the chief law officer was the first to come out to say we are going to gather the position. Because of the... he's a beneficiary of that uh, that uh, that judgment from that judgment that forum shot judgment from the mm -hmm. federal court in Omaha. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, Minister, so let me come to you um, and ask this question. I asked you, I asked it earlier, but I just want to to get your own perspective about it. Um, some ministers have actually started resigning. And some have seemingly dug in their heels to say, um, either not say anything or say, I'm not going anywhere until I consult my people uh, and, and, and all that. What does that go to, sh uh, how does that point to the morality or otherwise 
of such an, uh, an, an, an elected person or uh, the credibility of that person. And this is someone that is saying, okay, I want you to come and elect me into a position so that I can do something, you know? Thank you for the opportunity to be on your program. Um, in fact, when some people describe Nigeria as a banana republic, these are the kind of instances that they will cite to buttress why they characterize the country as a banana republic. In Senate climes, did you know that a minister, commissioner, special advisor, senior special assistant, and all of that, they serve at the pleasure of the president? He does not have to even give you reason for dropping you. Ingege is saying he's going to consult his constituent, he's going to meet with the minister president. Who is he? Who is he? It's systems like this that throw up such characters. Mm. You, know, you know, I'm really, I'm really very, because here you have, you have been a governor, you have been a senator, you have been a minister. What else? You want to be the president. And the president, in no uncertain terms, have asked you to go. You said you are going to be consulting your constituents. Did you consult your constituents before, be, be, before you, you accepted the appointment hmm. to say, oh, should I accept or should I not accept? The bottom line is this. We are experiencing culture of impunity. And as I said in many interviews I granted yesterday, the president is to blame. I blame the president. Many of the governors over one month ago have asked their aides to resign. Commissioners in Ganduje, uh, you know, the, 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 the Delta State yeah, Governor, many of them have asked their. They didn't wait for a section. They are not even citing any section of the law. Because, look, the which section of the law the president cites to drop Minister of uh, Power? And agriculture last September 1. Did this cite uh, Section 84? It, said, it just simply said he is no longer in need of their service. They serve at the pleasure. They don't have a tenor. A president can appoint you as a minister in the morning and do away with you in the afternoon of that day. Nothing, you can't challenge it in court. It's different from statutory positions. Like a mafia is dancing around. In fact, I had I've read it in the papers today that he has submitted his presidential nomination for. After saying that he didn't ask those people to go and procure when he was after consulting God, uh, he, he will use his own hard earned money to procure. Where did he submit the same form that was allegedly he procured for? He probably has an arrangement to reimburse uh, <laughs> those who have procured it, maybe as a way of seemingly progressing. But coming to you, uh, Barista Olabi, uh, and drawing from the comments that were made by Mr. Jide, should this directive only stop with members of the Federal Executive Council? Because we know it is an open secret that there are head of agencies scattered around everywhere in the capital city that have shown interest in the next election, either as members of us of Rep or even governors, they are sitting there. Should we, even though they are uh, statutory uh, appointments uh, that were confirmed by the Senate, is it also not morally wrong that they continue to occupy that office while they look for another, in, you, you know? Uh, it's not even only morally wrong. It is also legally wrong. As it is now, the law as it is now is that Section 84 sub 12 subsists. Yes. So even a political appointee, whether at the state level or federal level, if you are caught up with the provisions of that act and you refuse to do the needful, of course, section, subsection 13, I'm sorry, sub 13 yeah. of that section applies. Which and it knows what to do, which hmm. is the fact that your name will not be included hmm. in the election. One of the one of the points that were pointed out by the guests that came in a bit earlier was even with the presidential directive, it does appear that those resigning have already flaunted the provisions of, 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 of that rule by having to resign a number of days before uh, the primary. Is this not a double whammy for the no, people who are Interestingly, there? there is no timeline given to them in that provision. Okay. okay. There's no timeline given to them. The section, the 
refuses to say anything mm -hmm. in respect to when they are expected to to, to resign. Mm -hmm. The only section of the law that mentions time, which is 30 days, is 66, the section 66 of the Constitution. Electoral Heart did not mention any particular time. Okay. So which of them but, should but, take precedence? But, but what has also happened is that the electoral guideline of APC has said, if you are going to contest, you have to resign 30 days to the primary. Okay. So the, primary, the, the guidelines of the party has put a date and, and, and um, I'm waiting, because from this week, maybe from today, there will be screening panels sitting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where you will see the party will be wielding the big sticks. Because I learned reliably that there are a number of checklists you have to meet. For including you. this one? Including, yes, mm -hmm. your letter of resignation. It's part of what will be looked at. Mm -hmm. So your tax be... clearance, your letter of resignation, your, um, your last health position, and all of that. So there is a provision. There is a long list of provisions. We are just looking at the monetary, oh, where well, you paid 100 million. Like issue of uh, delegates, you have to have 370 delegates supporting your candidacy for it to be valid. So you could see, in fact, um, papers reported this morning, um, Tinubu support group submitted for him. Oshiba mm -hmm. yesterday mm -hmm. has submitted. And we are learning that uh, okay. Good Lord Jonathan yes. uh, is also, <laughs> maybe our incoming president, is <laughs> <laughs> also submitted after initially denying. Mm -hmm. You know, the, what, what shocks me is the nature and character of our political class. Mm -hmm. They are so shameless. They do not have a sense of decency, they do not have a sense of decorum. They, were, they are ready to contradict themselves even the, first, the very second after they have spoken. Mm. Because, okay, look at Emefiele now. Why we were Emefiele who came out? I said, look, I, I, I didn't ask anybody. And, and this is what I wrote about in my column in the punch yesterday, mm. which I elucidated the, the issue of third party funding, third party campaign finance which is what they sorry it might well be the same person who will funnel the money to mm. those phantom groups to go and do it mm. on their behalf if it is true that someone like good lord jonathan from what i was reading on nan's website that the, some african leaders prevailed on him we all know you need to watch the video of the fulani group that bought him the phone they were so assertive. He said, look, whether he wants to take it or not, we have procured the form for him. Now we heard that he has registered in the Sotoke world. Now we heard mm. he's going to be submitting his form today. This is the same person that said, look, I never knew this group. I don't have anything to do with the, the, this, dissociating and all. So when you look at the nature and character of Nigerian politician, you, it's not peculiar to us, I must say this. It's a global phenomenon because even there's what is called public politics. Mm. And you know, our politics is essentially transactional. Mm. It's very transactional. There is a trending joke on social media, maybe you've read it. Invest 100 million and get 500 million on May 30th. Mm. You, know? Uh, <laughs> you, you know? Because they are all traders. They are trading. <laughs> they are all traders. Many of them. I tell you, and let, take my word for it, if Jonathan truly is in this race, that's the next president. Well, okay. uh, if he, if, if so truly, of, uh, if truly, no, I'm saying this, I'm, well, I'm making it, I'm sticking out my neck. Mm -hmm. If truly he's in this race, and we know the permutation. Mm. The permutation for some time is that this issue of power shift, the not is under pressure to allow power to shift to the south. And they are looking for somebody who, whether he says it or he doesn't say it, cannot stay more than one time. Mm. So well, let's this assume, man will uh, stay is, one time, is, power uh, will come back to that is, not that in is, that, is, that is one way to look at it. I mean, several permutations that we seem to have seen yeah, exactly. uh, with regards to this president. You were going to say something. Yes, I, I wanted to, to bring us back to um, Section 84. Okay. Um, uh, some people have pro uh, pointed out a flaw or some have, have, have pointed it out that um, maybe the, the, it needs to be rejigged so that it can actually provide the level playing ground 
that it seeks? Because most people are saying that, okay, fine, we need these um, political office holders to resign so that we can, so that they cannot use state funds to run campaigns and, and, and whatnot, what, which, which puts everybody on an even keel. But we just heard that um, due to the provisions of that particular um, section, the, the, the vice president is exempt. And we all know he's running for president. Now, if all these ministers that are running for president as well, uh, we say they resign because we don't want them to use state funds, what about the vice president? Well, it, you know, the, the vice president is accepted from the provisions of that uh, electoral mm -hmm. hearts. But uh, I will go back to what I said here a month, about a month ago, that in my own personal opinion, if you ask me, I will tell you that uh, the National Assembly should take a bold step to amend the constitution itself to include mm. this provision. Mm. I think that's the right thing to do. And uh, there, there, there wouldn't be anything wrong if they equally move forward to include elect, elect, uh, what do you call it, those who are holding, holding elected elective positions, positions, like governors. What is wrong if you ask them to hand over to the most senior civil servant in their state three months before election, if they win, you show them in again and they continue from where, from where they stop. What is wrong in that? Mm. It, it, what we are trying to talk about here is that you create a level playing field for political actors to play. Mm. If you, for instance, you see the way these governors move around in private jets, whose fund are they using? Mm. Whose fund are they using? They're using public fund. So that has already put them, giving them an advantage over other aspirants who don't hold similar positions that they are occupying at the moment. Mm. So ask them to resign three months to the election. If you come on, if you if you are popular, let us be on the same level mm. and to contest election. If people want you, they, they elect you, well, of course you start from where you stop. Mm. It's as simple as that. Mm. Let me come to you, Mr. Jide. Away from the action, as a political analyst, what do you think will happen to to the field now? Um, because the talk before now has been whether or not this government will have the balls to ask these people to resign. And so uh, they've been behaving as though all you needed as an endorsement is the fact that you are serving and you just move from one elective position or appointed position to another. Mm -hmm. Now that this has taken uh, full effect, how, how would it change the current political circumstances that we see in the country with regards to the playing, level playing field that uh, Barista has talked about. Truth, truth be told, <clears throat> the playing field cannot be level altogether. There will be some rough patches, but we are saying let's smooth in it as best as we can. Mm. Uh, I will not tell the line. You know, it's only Bangladesh that I know or had that will ask its elected official to resign ahead of Next contesting election. for re-election or stuff like that. Not even in U.S. I mean, in U.S., if you are a sitting president, you are seeking re-election, you stay put. So for that category of elected official, it might be very dicey because when you say leave for three months, that means governance will cease for that period. Uh, the Constitution does not empower acting PAMSEC, to you know, to be a governor, doing uh, acting in, uh, as a governor. Even the case of speakers standing in for... Uh, mm -hmm. The post governors, are, we saw the shenanigans that takes place within that 90 days before another election in the case of impeachment and all of mm. that. So, by and large, the, the level cannot be smooth uh, 100%. Level. But for this category of okay. people that we are high, it is a shame because it's a grace and honor and a privilege for you to be appointed to serve as a minister or special advisor, or commissioner, or special assistant, whatever you are called. Out of 200 million plus, hmm. you are, you are, these are people who are, web, in fact, there is a trending um, news doing calculations of how, some of, how long some of these people have stayed in government. Hmm. Someone like Amechi have never done any work in his life. To the best of my knowledge, I don't know where he has ever worked after graduating from school, jumped into politics, became speaker for eight years moved from speaker eight years, became governor for eight years, moved from being a governor for eight years, became a minister, minister for seven years now. So some people, like Achebe says, some people have their 
uh, I have their goals, cracking their for them. Mm. The same thing with someone like Ahmed Lawa, from House of Rest to Senate, in, in almost 23 years, he's been there. Mm. But those are exceptions. And I, I'm not envying them, uh, you know, they, just like Matthew Mbu, you mm. know, from very tender age, was in government for a very long time. So there are those exceptions to the rule. But the bottom line is this. If you know you have the capacity to aspire for higher office, the bottom line is not to say you cannot run. Please, just leave the seat. Mm. Let's look at let's look at the impact of their staying put in the last one month. Mm. Which five will Amiti say he has attended to since he began this journey of consultation in the last close to two months? Mm. Uh, the train mishap in Cardinal took place March 28. I think a week after is when he declared. Mm -hmm. And since that time, he's mm -hmm. been moving from one state to the other, meeting mm -hmm. with delegates, meeting with traditional rulers, as if traditional rulers are going to be delegates voting mm -hmm. for him. But it has always been the tradition mm -hmm. that uh, when you consult, you now, also talk to... Now, the consultation should be surreptitious. You can mm -hmm. use your weekend to do consultation. You can do the consultation on phone. Not that you abdicate your primary responsibility. Some, some are even arguing that you should consult before you declare. Exactly. The, that, the, that's, the the other, that's the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. I agree with those school, that school of thought. Mm -hmm. Consult first. Like the case of uh, Ashiwa Jibola Ametimu. Instead of him to first consult, he went to the president. After meeting <laughs> with the president, last time meeting with other that, stakeholders. That, that is a consultation. <laughs> so. but, 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 but you know, even Ahmed Yerima went to meet with the president last week. Mm. He said he has come to consult. But you see, the president has only one vote. Mm. No matter what, yes, it may be very influential, but this worry I know. Mm. Uh, well, we do respect to him. Uh, even if 200 of you want to have it, he will say you have my backing. Mm -hmm. But he will, he will only reveal his, 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 uh, his preferred candidate maybe mm -hmm. a, a week or a day to the call. The bottom line is, let's look at, like I said, what impact these people have made. They have lowered governance quotient in the last two, three months of their declaring for this position. Mm -hmm. because. Many of them have not sat at their table to attend to files. Mm. And it is very important that the last one year of this administration should be impactful. Look at how much we have borrowed to run this government. Four trillion subsidy. Four trillion for the first time in the history of this country. This country is investing four trillion of petroleum subsidy alone. As we is asking for a social, he's not gotten it. Mm. So many other things. If there is no governance breakdown, if these people, in spite of their consultation and all of that, if they are still attending to their official duties, mm. it might not be too much of an issue for me. But the fact that they have taught, look at the governors. Almost all the governors that have declared to run, you won't find them in their state. They are either in Abuja or visiting those delegates all over the place. Mm. And that is bad for governance. Because a country like this, that is underdeveloped, that is not on its way to meeting any of the SDG, mm. any of the 70 SDG, I don't know where we are. Well, well, we have eight years left mm -hmm. on that uh, SDG 2030. Mm. We are not on the way to meeting any of those G SDGs. But we have people either elected or appointed who behaves like the Lord of the Manor, mm. like Emperor, like they are doing you a favor, even serving you, mm. with all the perks of office. And there is something many Nigerians mm. are missing. When they are doing computation that, oh, they are paying 100 million, and the entire salary of a president in four years is 56 million. Who tells you they live on salary? <laughs> By the grace of God, who tells you? These are millionaires, billionaires. There is no governor in Nigeria that is not a billionaire. Even I tell you for free. Even if you can't show us any company. No, 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 no. no. You, you know, let me, let me put it to you, mm -hmm. Sunday. Uh, look, I, I took it, I, I never knew they were that rich before until Rocha and Sokorocha made a public statement. He was charged to court, my brother, uh, by EFCC for 2.9 billion fraud. 
the day he declared his presidential mission. Did you know what Richard said? Richard said, look, this is laughable. You are dragging me to court for 2.9 billion. The Imo State government is throwing me 8 billion. For what? He said that is his security vote for eight years yeah. that he served as governor, which he never collected. Eight billion. That means Imo State, for him, every year, is entitled to one billion naira as security, security. This security vote, you don't retire. Yeah. Mm. This security vote, you don't have to account for. Yeah. So already, if he, and he wished not to take it mm. for the eight years he was in government. So he's now saying that if I, if I fail to take eight billion, mm. why should I steal your 2.9 billion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So quickly, Mr. Olabi, yeah. um, slightly away from this, uh, within the week we saw calls by a senior uh, uh, practitioner in, 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 um, in, in a law, 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 law uh, sector call for, rightly or wrongly, the need for an extension of tenure for the president uh, <laughs> on the basis <laughs> on the basis of insecurity and, and all of that. Uh, very quickly, as we wrap up, I would like your thoughts. That, that, uh, you know, that, that is that is unconstitutional mm. and, it, and it's equally laughable. Mm. Mm. How can somebody be in this in this in this? And age, a senior advocate for that matter. In, in this mm. age, somebody's <laughs> talking about tenure extension for a, for a, for a non-performing president. Mm. Interesting. Mm. And your final thought, Mr. Jide. No, I'm just a wary. We should be wary of lawyers. Mm. Okay. My brother is a lawyer, but apologies. Without exemption. Because this, this, this is how it started in 1993. Mm. This, this, uh, 1980, 1993, yes. No, 2000. No, 1993. Hope 93. Mm. Okay, okay. This is how it started with Auto Zeribe. Mm. Uh, Association no, for Better no, Nigeria. No, no. You know why? Um, Baba uh, 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 Afe uh, Babalola was the one that mm. first threw mm. the, the first the uh, uh, and said, look, uh, put in an interim government. Government mm. for right. six months. All right, so officially. But, but, but the, the, <laughs> Baba knows that yeah. the, the law, the, the court has invalidated the interim government. Unfortunately, it's not unfortunately now we, we have a senior advocate that is also saying that staying in, in office for another six months. Yeah. So <laughs> lawyers need to be aware, particularly senior lawyers. They should not derail this democracy for us. Thank you. Uh, all right. So thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for coming to the studio. Barrister Olabi, a legal practitioner, Mr. Jide, uh, who is a friend of the House and uh, a political and public affairs uh, analyst for mm -hmm. joining us this beautiful Thursday morning.